we gotta we gotta get the party started here. <laughs> I already had mine this morning. I I got up at like two forty, so I was like to pound this jack up. <laughs> it's perfect. Well, welcome back. Another episode, C Suite Unfiltered. Uh, Mike's caffeinated since two forty this morning. I'm I'm just getting started, so he's an early Dude, early achiever, if you will. You're going against my uh, my sponsored brand of Jocko with that Celsius, bro. I know you're a big Jocko guy. I we need we need to get into the water and or energy drink space. I think if we have a consumable Horrible. product we can sell horrible i disagree horrible once the idea. brand is big enough <laughs> no. it's like three the success low. rate the sex the success rate of carbonated beverages is so low the amount of transport costs is abhorrent what 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 about like a one-off consumable product though because there are celebrities or people that get big followings and then they're yeah, just like let me the make a point. consumer product we don't have that kind of following right. right so that's what i'm saying like when <laughs> when when we get there when you get there <laughs> we never will because business isn't mainstream enough you have to be like logan paul to like bring those kind of numbers in yeah i'm just saying i feel like there's there could be a product you know there's I don't better mark- ways of making money <laughs> yeah but that's that's a fun way in my opinion <laughs> yeah let's get people caffeinated <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man marcus had an idea once he was like what if we took to our customers on estimates he's like what if we took them like the green juice you know and he was like and we call it grass clippings <laughs> marcus had the craziest idea sometimes <laughs> yeah he also yeah. has an idea that he wants to build what i mentioned several years ago which is a piece a a, a, a seed of grass that grows only two inches and then stops <laughs> <laughs> And I said, dude, if you do that, we'll close down Augusta and just sell that. Hundred <laughs> percent, yeah, dude. He needs to get on the horn with um, who? Which um, Freeberg is really into like yeah, the, yeah. Uh, genome editing and like gene editing yeah. for crops. So the king of quinoa. Yeah, I wasn't planning. Yes, the king of quinoa. I wasn't planning on going there. What are your thoughts on that? Like just generally, gene editing, like crops and consumables, like things that we eat. Obviously, like. Yes, I just cracked a Celsius. There are tons of chemicals <laughs> and horrible things in here. I'm aware of that. But what do you? How do you feel about like actually hopping in there, altering DNA, things of that nature? Well, like to consume it, yeah, probably not great. But overall, I, I'm a big fan of science. Yeah. So like, <laughs> if we could build a piece of grass, like a grass that only grows two inches, stays green year round, and doesn't need cut, let's go. I'm all about that action. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, when we start playing with life, it also creates risk. That's like why COVID actually you know you could say that's why it originated like we start playing around with these things um Mm -hmm. some would say that's like not our place to be doing that but yeah 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 i think it's like a retort that a lot of people have it's like well are humans allowed to play god and that's whether you believe in god or not it doesn't matter but should we play god should we actually like be messing with actual like physical traits of people or things of that and, nature so and, and, if, and if we and if we don't will the robots beat us to it yeah <laughs> that's where we are fantastic well that is not what i thought we would start today but i did have uh i did have some questions for you so uh i know those in augusta nation know this but i don't think the general public knows this because they just don't know your travel schedule uh but you had the opportunity to go to a, a conference a meetup i don't even technically know the, the specifics of it a workshop there we go with acquisition.com so for those that don't know that's alex and Layla hormozzi's company um so I guess why did you decide to go there were you invited how does that work i'm assuming you don't just go online and say i want to come and then pay five bucks and then you're on a wait list or whatever so how's it how's it work <laughs> yeah so yeah you 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 go in a, like a form then they someone calls you and like they go through the process it's a, it's a higher ticket item it, right. and i wouldn't recommend anyone really go unless you're making over five million in revenue um okay. potentially even 10 uh or or if you're making over a million dollars in profit like um there were some people that were smaller um and i they didn't get it very much like i talked to them um <laughs> because there was like one one of our worksheets it was like how much profit you make ebitda and the first one started with a million dollars so if you didn't make a million dollars in ebitda you couldn't fill out the form oh yeah <laughs> so, oh, there you go. <laughs> so i was like oh this is problematic for some people here yeah. but anyways um so it wasn't I mean, can i interject there it wasn't yeah. that it was like the content was over their head it was just that it didn't necessarily apply to their stage of business. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, like I, I think you know, someone with a good head on their shoulders would understand it. But then, then you're just, you're getting into just tickling your brain and having you know some mental gymnastics, which is there's value to that. Totally. And most entrepreneurs would enjoy it. But actually, like meaningful like changes in your business, like 
talking about hiring executives and you know the value you know the, the valuation of your business and key man risk is not super important if you have a two hundred thousand dollar business yeah you have key man risk because you are the business <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so um yeah there are just a lot of more high level higher level things that i think was super valuable for me i came back super refreshed just overall um like super laser like focused and not a lot of sleeping because i have like a lot of ideas <laughs> and you execute yeah. on but um i enjoy that like and so it was good. I've been really in the weeds for the last like six months. Cool. And so uh, being able to kind of get a zoom out and see other people that are building businesses that are 10 times my size and mm -hmm. um, how they're executing and how they think about business is, is refreshing. Yeah, I think it's like bad analogy, but like an owner that, you know, has to work in the field because it's spring rush or this, that or the other. And and then they get to step out and they, they have a conversation with another owner or someone else in the industry. And then they get to talk about, you know, the the high level tasks in the business. It is refreshing. And I think even myself as an employee, there are tasks where sometimes you just you have to put your head down and you get it done. And then when you get to zoom out, it's it is refreshing. So it's it's good to hear that you were able to do that. How many people were there? Was it a pretty small group? I have to assume like 100. it was uh, okay yeah so 100 people in like a, i'm assuming like a, a big conference room kind of meeting hall uh kind of like really they just put up curtains at their headquarters and like okay. their headquarters is like thirty six thousand square feet or something like that but in three levels so it wasn't like it was it was a little tight honestly uh because wh where they had the area because like downstairs is the gym upstairs is the studios so you're just really on that one floor and so um but it was it was great it was great to be there um the best part of the, the entire trip was dr cash he was there my coach cool um, he's been there for the past couple months developing the workshop and then he's working on a big project with alex that's coming out in a few months and so um he was there in person and that was the best part of the whole trip so cool that's awesome that's great um you said there was a gym downstairs so it was just like the whole company has a gym like no it's just <laughs> alex's gym so, oh really yeah, like his his thing, he likes to spend money on his gym equipment. So like the whole bottom floor is just a gym for him and Dr. Cashy. <laughs> That's nuts. And, and and Layla, I guess. And I assume that they don't let anyone see it or use it. No. Yeah, no, we were not off that floor. <laughs> yeah. One thing I, I listened to a recent um I don't know if you listened to the long form video Alex put out maybe like a week ago now, um, where it's just an hour and a half. And he's just sitting in like a black room with a microphone. And I thought it was a really cool concept because he just had one of his camera folks, I assume, or producers or assistants just asking him questions. Um, and he talked about like working out and he was like, no, like I just, I work out because I want to look jacked. <laughs> and it's just like period yeah. full stop. And I just think that's like, <laughs> part of me, I'm like, I like it because he's doing it for himself. But part of me is like, I, I like, it's, it, it's just to each his own, right? Like, I don't know. It's just yeah. kind of funny, but um I thought that was you cool. also, like, just... the reason the reason I like it is because it it is stripping away all the facades that most people would put around it. Like I want to be healthy. No, you don't. You're not looking that jacked if you want to be healthy. Yeah, like yeah. it's not healthy. <laughs> his a his back is all jacked up, and so um, you know when people use facades of like really the, their real reason. Yeah, that's when I have a problem. Like the guy is taking steroids. Like you don't take steroids if you just want to be healthy <laughs> yeah. so anyways um that's why like even like with the making the money thing that's been like my mantra for the past like eight months i think and it's been like mm -hmm. we just wanted to make more money <laughs> and yeah, consultant totally. and the last turnaround was like so like what's the reason for your business I'm like we want to make maximize profit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i want everyone else inside the business to make more money <laughs> so yeah. yeah fair enough um when you said he takes steroids did you say alex takes steroids yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I kind of assumed, has he like publicly PRT. said that? Yeah. Yeah. He's, okay. he's doing yeah. his regimen too. Like what, how many milligrams? Oh, right. You're right. You're right. Okay. I guess I forgot about that. Cool. Yeah. So I, um, I don't know. Me, I'm wrong. I don't know if steroids and TRT are the same thing, but I know he yeah. takes TRT. We'll put an asterisk in that. Don't hold us to it. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I, and I'm sure there are people out there that no matter what, like they're going to classify anything like that as a steroid, right? So uh, PED or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cool. So, so you got to meet Alex, I'm assuming, because Dr. Cashy is, is friends with the Hormozis. He is your coach um, and you got to talk to Alex. So tell us what, you know, tell us from your mortals what that, that was like. <laughs> <laughs> so they, uh, Alex and Layla, they really kept aside. Like there was no selfies, there was no talking or anything like that. So I didn't get any one-on-one -on -one with him, but um, Dr. Cashy talked to obviously talked to him about me and then when he was doing q a he specifically said like was looking for mike he's like where's mike and so then i was like oh snap he knows yeah. about me so <laughs> and so then i was able to ask some really 
pointed questions about um, the franchise specifically. And so um, that was super helpful. And um, I was able to share all the numbers and like really dig into it with them a bit. So uh, that was super nice. And Dr. Cash just is an absolute G of a friend, um, just like on so many levels. Like I went away with just like Alex and Layla, great. Dr. Cashy, that's who I want to be like. Cool. And so, yeah. um, as a as a man and a friend, he, he's a pretty good, good good dude. Like he, he'd cool. be there in the morning just to say hi. He'd come down fr from working f at lunch just to say hello to me. Uh, of course, there's other people who want to talk to him. He just come be with me. So um, he, he's just a good dude. He he, he makes yeah. you feel heard and felt and his that's presence. Cool. And so um, I, I want to be that type of man. Yeah. And uh, although being famous and everything has its perks and what most people aspire to be, like seeing that, um, I want a way of being like that's 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 the type of person I want to be. Mm -hmm. That's good. I, and I think I could kind of guess like what Alex, Layla, kind of what their mission statements are. And I'm sure it's in the pieces of their content. But what would you say? Because you're saying, hey, they're great. They're fantastic. I learned a ton from them. Awesome. But you say, I want to be like Dr. Cashy. So what would you say his, is his like ethos, you know, kind of going back to the conversation we had on last week's pod? Where, what do you feel like his idea is to be successful? What is he trying to give back to the world with the way he's helping you or the Hormoses or whoever else he talks to or helps? Well, I don't want to speak on his behalf because I haven't asked this question directly. Yeah. Um, I would say from my from my perspective, though, he wants to see greatness magnified. Hmm. And okay. so I think he has a unique skill of taking someone's raw talent and then um, polishing it and making it incredible. And mm -hmm. so even what you're going to see them working on, it's coming out in a few months, uh, is literally going to break world records. And so um, uh, he, he dedicates himself to that. So the, the project he's they're working on, he's basically he's not even doing my coaching calls the next several months. Mm -hmm. um, he's he as he calls it, he's going full monk mode, and so um, <laughs> that's all he's working on. And so like yeah. that's inspiring to me. And ultimately, his name will not be on the the work the work that they're putting out. Um, but yeah, he he's still willing to do it, and um, that's pretty f phenomenal. And obviously, yeah. Like so, anyways. Um, It is a special skill, in my opinion, to be able to add to someone else's work to make it better instead of being the author of it. And mm -hmm. he he does that well. He compliments other people instead of feeling like he has to originate it. And mm -hmm. I think that's a, a skill of a many executives um, mm -hmm. and is underappreciated in the entrepreneurial community. But more importantly, what I take away from him is his ability to um, connect with people, the ability to care for the people he loves. like. He didn't need to be there for me. He didn't need to like come say hello and give me a hug every morning and stuff like that. Um, he's a good dude. He's a solid man. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, to that quote, you said you said that he wants to help. Well, I, I'm trying to summarize. You said basically he wants to like help others that are great and to amplify it. I would maybe add to that. Is it comma from outside of the business? Because I think there are a lot of people inside of businesses that care about the owner, care about the greatness that the owner can bring, and are, it's their job to amplify it. But because he's outside of it, is there an extra level of care or impact, would you say? Because um, he doesn't work for Augusta, right? He doesn't work for a co-pilot. But, you are, but he's your coach. Is that technically a consult? I, I'm just trying to like look at it from all angles. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to speak on his behalf. Um, right, but right. I would, and I don't want I would, you to have to speculate or, or cause you know, in every relationship, there's an exchange of value, right? And so, like, even with him and, and Alex, like, there's definitely economic value being exchanged. Um, right. and, and with my relationship, like, I pay a lot of money. So, like, um, but uh, I think that when you can make a customer, quote unquote, where you're exchanging value, feel so held and heard that they call you a friend, um, I feel like that's pretty impactful. And um, even just strangers, the way he interacts with people. Like, I want to be more like that. Um, and so like, there's this balance of like, can you be famous and do that? That's very difficult. Um, mm. because like there's security threats, there are, um, certain things. And I understand why like Alex and Layla have to be away from people, but like, we never got to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. We never got to shake their hand, take pictures, nothing. And mm. there's a level to me, like, I don't know if I want to get to that spot, um, and there was secure, like armed security guards and like pretty intense, like getting into the building, you're getting scanned and everything. 
And so do I want to get to that level? I don't know. Um, can I get to that level without giving up certain elements of being personable? I don't know either. So um, someone like him would help me navigate that down the road um, mm -hmm. if and when that happens. Because um, I like to be more personable, um, but there's there's like obviously security threats uh, and like other things that come along with mm -hmm. being famous that I have no idea of. So mm -hmm. I, I, I really can't judge anyone. Yeah. Well, and I think kind of transitioning here, you said, you know, long term, you'd love to be maybe seen as like a Dave Ramsey of small business. I think Dave Ramsey does have an element where he does feel accessible. Now, I'm sure there are security parameters around him because he is a very famous and probably household name at this point with personal finance. Um, but he still does like his call in shows. He still, you know, you see his accounts go live every once in a while, things of that nature. I think that helps create a personal element that is still a Attainable to most of your viewers. Yeah, and I would say Alex and Leia do a good job online of creating that personable, like they do answer questions, they mm -hmm. respond to comments, things like that. Um, I think it's when you're in person with them, and this is the part like if you were actually with Dave Ramsick, I'm assuming there's probably security. If you totally. go to their office, I am sure they're scanning people. So, like, yeah. it's just a different level. And I've been to big companies to do office tours and things before and like there's a lot of security and it makes sense like you hear people go into shootings at, at offices and things like that um disgruntled employees customers that are mad whatever yeah. um or even just damage yeah. property with malice right destroying computers yeah. whatever like vandalism just a different level right it's just yeah. a different yeah. level right and yeah. so um it's nice to see that and be like okay i don't i don't know if i'll ever get here uh but if and when mm -hmm. i do it's nice to see it before i get there and yeah. so um yeah yeah, interesting. Cool. What would you say without prying? Because I know a lot. There's a lot of things you're working on behind the scenes. But give us a taste. Give us a teaser. What was like a, a cool unlock or moment when you were talking to Dr. Kashi or listening to Alex that you you thought, okay, I'm acting on that immediately. Give give us just one. Because <laughs> I know one? there's a list. Oh, dude. I know there's, there's a, a list. Ton. Give, give us <laughs> like one. When I came, like when I first saw you, I'm like, sharing. we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but, uh, but a lot of that stuff too, you're going to keep behind closed doors, not not as a negative way. Like, hey, we got plans for conference. You got plans for another book you've alluded to. So I don't want to like spill any of that cool cool ideas that you have. But just like, hey, something that was really impactful and unlocked that you know, you'd be willing to share. There's a ton. Um, the one that like is the most general, but like is honestly probably the most impactful from my observation is every single time there's a problem for an owner or, or two things. One, being a CEO is you become the investor of time, attention, and energy. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's the role of what a CEO is. Think about that thing as like an investor, like allocation of money is like what an, what an investor talks about. Like, you know, uh, allocating of assets. Um, and so thinking of that as like a CEO's role. Secondly, every single time there was any sort of obstacle inside the businesses, I just consistently saw people that have nine, 10 figure businesses saying, okay, who can I hire to fix this? Mm -hmm. It was never like, how do I need to fix this? It is, who do I need to hire? Like, mm -hmm. that's all they think about. And so when, even when I saw like several, um, they showed like several changes in businesses that their portfolio and others have had, it was like problem. And then like, they didn't really like distinguish this, but I was like, the next step was always like who they hired. I was like, Stick. yeah. So like, <laughs> it made it really clear to me, like, okay, if there's the bottom line, here's the problems I have. I mean, these are the people I must hire. So like yesterday, two days ago, three days ago, I hired a uh, head of engineering for Copilot. Um, and I've already see, started seeing a bunch of stuff really good. Um, there's uh, someone we're going to, uh, when are you releasing this? I don't know. Uh, I, I, don't know. I, I can, I, I can't can sit on it. No, no, no. It's going to be too long. Uh, we're hiring another role. Um, yep. Uh, in, <laughs> inside of Augusta. I just we're hiring, another role. Yeah, yeah. we're hiring another role that will be really, really impactful. Um, and there's like five others. I can't find anyone in Bellingham that does it. So I'm going to make an indeed <laughs> ad and uh, hopefully get someone to move here for, for those okay. things down the road. And I have kind of a timeline. I like, obviously I come back from this, all these ideas. So my big thing is like, okay, when are they getting executed? Cause I can't do them all now. I'm going to take ex execute on them. So I probably have 10 months of a roadmap of like things I need to get done. Mm -hmm. uh, people to hire programs. I need to create for Augusta. Um, most importantly was like, one thing I'll share, um, one of my takeaways is like, I need to fix the um, the winter uh, for Augusta uh, and like create very clear paths of how you're supposed to 
operate in like systems and steps and like kind of choose your mm -hmm. own adventure during the winter because the winter across the lawn care and landscape industry but more specifically augusta it just kills owners um yeah. and so even though like a lot of them do okay with winter services and like snow and like the other i want to create like very like you choose one and you stick to this plan and mm -hmm. like there's five of them and you need to choose and like here's your step-by-step day-by-day what you're supposed to be doing right um so that that's that was like a like a one of the tangible takeaways that I'm gonna sure. be working on. Um, there, there's like a gazillion other big oh, ones. Yeah. Though. <laughs> so it was good. It was good, and it was one of those things where I'm like, I don't need anything else. I need ten months to execute on this, and then I'll be ready for more. Cool. And so um, it was it was funny because like even though I can't have calls with Dr. Cashy, I'm like, it's okay because like I just need to execute on stuff, and then yeah. when, when when you come back in three to six months, I'll be ready for you. Like I'll yeah. I'll be needing more polishing. So sure. all I will say to like this conference will be the best conference we've ever made nice. and will will be worth every dollar and some that we, we put whatever the price is, it'll be worth it. And cool. um, I will put more energy into this one, like probably five to 10 times more energy than last year into this one. Good. Awesome. The, the thing this. about being around Alex and Dr. Cashy is you do nothing with anything less than 110% of your energy. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> being more and more around them, it's like, I do so little, we can do so much better. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so yeah, the, I will say that this conference is, will be the best. Um, cool. And if anyone thought last year was okay, just it'll be five to 10 times better. Cool. Awesome. That's great. Um, one thing I do kind of want to ask a question about in what you just said there, which is anytime that they, Dr. Cashy, the hard you said like, Hey, there's a bottleneck here. There's a constraint. There's something holding your business back. The next thing was higher. That's what you said. Now, how do, how do you juggle that with knowing, and obviously you've acted on it, you have hired, but how do you juggle that knowing that historically you have run on an extremely lean business philosophy? What does that look like when you transfer from a, from a business that runs on a lean philosophy to not necessarily an abundance philosophy? Because I don't think you are saying like, oh, we're fat and happy, right? To talk to to reference a talk you did last at the last conference, like you're either fat and happy or you know skinny and hungry. Like, is there a transition where like now you're realizing okay, Augusta Copilot is is transitioning to more of a fat and happy state? Like, there's sustainable cash flow, so we can start to invest in hiring out. Like, where, where's the balance for you with hiring, but also running lean? Um, two things. One, what got us to one point will not get us to the next point. I mean, specifically mm -hmm. for me, it's like what got us to 10 million will not get us to 100 million. And so um, there are certain roles that I value uh, time around the team significantly more. And that's the majority of what I've hired for in the past. Um, and there's still hires I'm making literally today that revolve mostly around that. And that's fine. But mm -hmm. there are other roles that there's no point in banging our heads up against the wall for years trying to figure out if we can afford it. And mm -hmm. so like I was talking with Liz the other day, I was like, I wish I would have known this like five years ago because I probably would have hired someone that has like ran call centers for 20 years and would be it would have been able to save us a lot of hurt mm -hmm. and pain and lost money at command center um over the past few years and so like i feel like they're nailing it now but like it's been the hardest thing to scale and so um you know i could have avoided that if i just had enough money to go solve the problem by hiring someone but i didn't have the money to be honest so to your mm -hmm. point are we getting fat happy no but there's enough money to solve problems right um and expedite the the rate of learning and so i do feel like there's balance with this though the same way there's like got to be balanced between having a uh, heart and then leading by data and like objectivity but so there's balance there but the same thing i think there's balance between like hiring from internal and people that have been around and they understand the culture and the vision and the mission like that's super mm -hmm. important and i've always indexed 99.9 .9 that direction as mm -hmm. we grow and scale there's problems that become of size enough to where um we it is actually economically cheaper to hire someone instead of banging our head up against it for five years. And so mm -hmm. I've been banging my head up against, you know, Copilot stuff for four months now. And so eventually you have to go hire someone that is very uncomfortably expensive um, mm -hmm. and be like, uh, this is, this is the, this is the solution. And mm -hmm. so um, it's been like a, over the past couple of months merging into it. And then like, finally it's been, okay, we will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on someone's salary. I've never spent more than a quarter million dollars on someone's salary. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's scary. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. So cool. Awesome. Well, let's uh, let's switch it up. Appreciate you sharing some of your thoughts and ideas from meeting the Hormoses in the workshop you went to. Um, I did have a question, just kind of uh, looking at a couple data points here. So you, made dude, what are you going to title this mess? What are you going to title this episode? I, don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> just like watch it. <laughs> just do, just do like Alex and me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Look at that um, yeah. Just like watch this, <laughs> you and Alex. Um, a couple of data points here, um, and I can cut this part if you want. But what we what we have seen is that across Augusta, close ratio is up year over year and really historically, which is great. Um, now, juxtapose that with consumer spending being down, uh, at least early Q1 reports and what we know from 2023. What are your general thoughts on that? Is there there's not necessarily always a correlation. Obviously, the brand is growing. Like there's so many variables. But I didn't know if you had any thoughts about like you know you you made a post and, and we've all seen it and most people if you if you get the news or you subscribe to people on facebook uh, or youtube excuse me there seems to be a little bit of fear mongering right now in our industry um about like people aren't accepting jobs my close ratio is down i can't get employees and that always happens in spring but what are your general thoughts on that or takeaways and maybe we can get more specific um, if to, to, in relation to the data, like, I, I think there's too many variables to be decisive in terms of mm -hmm. what is causing the, the raise of close ratio inside of Augusta. Um, I, there's several variables. Like, yes, the economy is doing bad in, in many areas. <clears throat> Most people are saying they can't get jobs in terms of online and even parts of Augusta. There's there's um, owners are like, hey, it's feeling pretty skinny. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we are up across the board there's several variables though like i can't don't rely on any one of them for example like we now answer our phone 24 7. seems mm -hmm. to help <laughs> like mm -hmm. if, yeah. if you had the, the, like if you had the option of answering your phone 40 hours a week or answering 168 hours a week which one do you think you will close more jobs on yeah <laughs> um yeah. you know now we can do instant prices from our website so like there the, there's there's no more stopping uh, there's no more steps of like submit a web form. We we, we measure the proper. We contact you back with a quote. We wait for you to accept the quote. We then ask for a credit card. Like there's no more of that back and forth. Mm -hmm. so that helps a lot too. Um, and and when they come in from an, a mowing one, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, they're coming in as accepted. And so mm -hmm. what I've been really watching is, does it bring down the number of estimates a lot? Because typically we're not going to get an instant price form unless they have accepted it. There are some people that click decline and then we are able to try to re-engage them. But some people will just see the price and like, oh, I'm out. So we won't even get those, which in the past you would have submitted a form. You would have taken mm -hmm. the time to go do an assessment and they would have you know, uh, uh, declined. Put, declined it anyways. So yeah. I like to save that money because they would have been price sensitive anyways. Um, and then... Um, but, but what I was really watching, does that bring down the number of estimates? And it hasn't, like, I think the Bellingham shop the other day, we were showing me like, what, like we're, we're up like a couple percent by the, by the end of March of this year, year over year, we will be up a couple percent in terms of total estimates, not yeah, massively, which, but definitely yeah. not. But, but that was, I was watching that because I didn't want the instant pricing to drop the number of estimates dramatically um, right. because then every single person were just, you could make the argument that we're losing leads um, mm -hmm. of people submitting forms. So I haven't seen that at all, but then yet the, the, the close ratio is up a little bit. So there's just so many variables though. Like I'm not playing victory on this either. Cause like the end is still like, we're just starting the winter, uh, the spring rush. Some people are just starting mowing literally this weekend. So um, um, ultimately it's like, I know, I know like these are simple things. I know if I answer my phone 24 seven, I will get more leads instead of answering my phone for four hours. So should I do the 168? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Do I know that if every single estimate at commands and people are jumping on it from Monday morning all the way through Sunday night, every single day, will we get more estimates accepted? Yes. And those things are being done and that's never been done before at Augusta Nation. We've always had it where we were close, like now we're open on Sundays where estimates are going out and everything is rolling, which means Mondays, we don't have this massive jam. Like in the past, we would literally be working through the backlog for 24 to 40 hours of totally. thousands of voicemails and estimate request forms and contact forms and all of that. And so we would always get behind. And so I keep comparing like the last week of March is what I've been comparing this week versus 
2023, 2022, 2021. And every single time we were behind, we're not. And so that also plays into it too, because we're getting back to customers faster. So there's just like a gazillion variables. I just know one thing, I want that number to go up. And, yeah. um, and I don't want estimates to go down. And so um, I just don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be like, we're going to do one thing this spring to see if it makes a change. Well, what if the economy tanks? What if it goes like gangbusters and all of a sudden our, our mm -hmm. data is skewed? I just have to ask myself, will answering the phone 24 seven help us get more leads? Yes. Mm -hmm. Will getting to estimates faster and over hiring at command center allow us to be able to get to estimates faster? And is that going to include increase close ratio? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so these are the basics that like I've, I've I've learned to not overcomplicate. And ultimately, we can't change the rules of the game. I can't change the economy. I can't change politics. I can't change any of this stuff. All I can do is make sure that we are taking actions towards making those numbers better. And that's that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So what do you think for the folks that maybe aren't inside of Augusta? What do you think the biggest thing they can do going into the spring? You know, spring is ramping up all across the country. Most of the, you know, southern states, western states are already mowing. And then the rest of the country is going to start mowing here in the next couple of weeks. What's the biggest piece of advice for them? Is it get a call center, figure out how to answer your phone more? Uh, obviously, that's internal to Augusta because we have Max AI and we have virtual agents. What is your biggest piece of advice to the folks outside of Augusta? Join Augusta. Yeah so, <laughs> yeah, so if you go to AugustaLongHairServices.com slash franchise, you can book a call with Lee. <laughs> no, um, <clears throat> I would just, don't get, don't get fancy. Don't complicate things. Will answering your phone more lead to more estimates? Yes. Um, will getting estimates to customers faster result in a higher close ratio? Yes. So focus on doing those things. Um, mm -hmm. whether that be extending your hours from 40 to 45, whether that be getting estimates out within 24 hours instead of four days, I know those things will work. Those are the tried and true ABCs, the Bible of customer service. And so just focus on that. Like, don't get worried about like whether what Augusta is doing or don't get worried about like technology, like just focus on will these things happen? Like, mm -hmm. it's like the laws of gravity. It's the laws of business. Yeah. It's like, it will, if you get to customers faster, you will increase close ratio. Mm -hmm. Like, it might not be year over year, because like now the economy, if the economy drops 10% and your close ratio has dropped 4%, well, that difference in 6% could potentially be the fact that you got to estimates faster. So it's not necessarily comparative last, last year. That's why I don't like that, because you're like, it's better last year. Therefore, like, we have made improvements. No, like, there's a lot of variables. Just become better. And, like, ask yourself the question, is this going to be better for the customer? Is this going to ultimately lead to better, like, business? Does it does it abide by the rule, like, the laws of business gravity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And I think, yeah, focusing on yourself and just being better is, is always going to produce more results. It's funny, too. We had an example happen this week inside of Augusta where um, I, I don't want to give too many details because it gets convoluted very easily. Long story short, customer accepted work from an Augusta owner. Augusta owner performed the work, sent them an invoice. Cust customer thought Augusta was calling them about the invoice, answers. Then the, the person on the phone asked for a down payment. They pay the down payment. It was another landscaper. So uh -huh. what happened was Augusta got them the bid, did the job, sent them the invoice, and just then, the day we sent the invoice, another landscaper called for a 50% down payment. So like, it just, in that case, the Augusta owner was just better. Like they got the estimate out faster, they got the job scheduled faster, they got the invoice to the customer faster, and then the customer's confused and thinking like, is this a scam? Thankfully, That's our funny. team at Command Center is great. Liz and her team solved this for the customer and the owner, but it was I think it just comes down to like, our owner was better. Like they just got the job done quicker. They got the estimate faster. It was a better customer experience. Like that landscaper that called for a 50% down payment may be an awesome guy. I don't even know who he is. I don't know what his business was, but we were just faster. We were just better, right? Get used to it, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's how it's going to roll. Awesome. I think that is all I have for today. Now, do you have any not financial advice for the people? Oh, dude, do you have any? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. It's just, it's very simple. Someone needs to hear this. My not financial okay. advice. Okay. Clean your mowers, sharpen your blades. Someone out there is neglecting to do it. And so I'm telling we have everyone, the, Be the Bellingham mowers, you'll be very happy, Mike. They are all on their side right now. And all the decks are getting cleaned down nice. to the metal with a special Beautiful. conditioner. We're putting nonstick spray on them. We're sharpening the blades. We're ready. We're ready for the overgrowns. Someone out there isn't, do it. Let's go.
Um, okay, my non-financial advice. I'll go really technical because that's the only thing I can think about right now. Sorry, Perfect. I'm kind of tired. Um, <laughs> is if you have multiple services, one of the things that's tough because we have all, most home services have like variety of services, recurring work, project-based work, et cetera. Um, you actually have a different customer acquisition cost for every single service. So if you market for this service, you have a different customer acquisition cost. And so um, I'll probably make a video on this on the Home Service Millionaire channel, but like spend money on whichever service has the lowest customer acquisition cost and then use upsells to sell all the other services. Nice. It's the most efficient way of your marketing, assuming that you have a good system to upsell people. You should never be marketing for services unless you're just trying to fill the schedule. Mm -hmm. You should never be marketing for services that have a higher customer acquisition cost, for example. And, and more importantly, I should say, customer acquisition cost to lifetime value. So for example, you have a $10,000 project. Um, and I've seen this number consistently. Like For a big projects, sometimes you might have to pay $500 to get that project customer acquisition cost and that doesn't necessarily even include like the time of creating the estimate and the proposal is a lot higher with that let's just assume it's 500 dollars um a lot of people will say okay well i want that because i'm having, i'm gonna make 9500 dollars okay great but really you have a one to 20 or 20 to one ratio of your customer acquisition cost to your lifetime value whereas if i can spend 50 dollars and get a mowing customer and I keep that person for, let's just call it two years. Assume mm -hmm. I have a 50% churn rate every year. I keep them for two years and I keep them, um, uh, I'm making $2,500 per year on them. So I do a cleanup or something, pull their weeds, do some winter services, and I mow their lawn. That's $5,000 lifetime value. And that is $40 for the customer acquisition cost. Now, I only made $4,960 from that customer or $950 mm -hmm. from that customer. Mm -hmm. So some people would say, I should go with the project because I'm making twice as much. My opinion is whatever has the lowest um, CAC to LTV ratio, in this case, it's like, like one to 120. Mm -hmm. You should go market for mowing and then upsell them into the project. Right. Um, so Alex talked about this um, and, and I thought it was really, really good. So I'm going to create some some more like home service related stuff around it uh, and hopefully make a video. But like that's uh, like always been our strategy, like advertise during spring rush when yep. everyone needs mowing and for low customer acquisition costs. And then you grease the wheels, like grease the wheels, i.e. upsell them, email, text message, blast, whatever you got to yep, do, totally. get them into the projects because I want the $10,000. I just don't want to pay $500 to get them and only have mm -hmm. a one, 20 to 1 CAC, uh, LTV to CAC ratio versus 120. So mm -hmm. um, there you have it. Cool. I love it. Cactus, that's a it very, that's no, a very I, long non-financial advice. Yeah, but it's good. That's the kind of stuff I like. Bring back the whiteboard videos. <laughs> oh, it's coming. It is, dude. It's there. I it's, know. Bro. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There are people subscribe out there that to Home it. Service Millionaire. That was my yeah. that was my <laughs> my uh, non-financial advice last week. Yeah. Uh, subscribe to this channel because we are very close to a thousand, which is very oh, really? exciting. Yeah, we're Let's at like go. 960, 960, somewhere in that, 960, 970. Um, so that would be cool. But if you guys would like to subscribe, I was looking at our numbers. Uh, typically 60% of viewership is non-subscribers. So oh, shame. Thing. Yeah, shame. So anyways, it's a gentleman's agreement. We're putting in the work to do this. We would just like, just click one button. <laughs> so cool. Is that it? All right. That's, that's all I got. That's the pod. Let's go.